If you comment this video, your profile picture will be in the thumbnail and you'll secure your 15 minutes of personal fame. In this video, I will show you how I did that and how you can use the YouTube API to manipulate your videos and do all kinds of weird little things. Maybe some of you have seen videos by Tom Scott or Mr. Beast where they're putting the view count in the title of the YouTube video. It's an absolutely useless gimmick, but actually it's not that simple. It turns out when you look into the technicalities, it's a great way to learn what kind of data YouTube collects about your videos and how you can learn programming while interacting with your YouTube audience. Personally, I'm doing this to create a positive feedback loop. More comments equals more views, and more views equals more comments equals infinite profit. The first step of any software engineering project is planning. In this case, we have three things we need to do. First, we have to get the comments by using the YouTube API. We have to download those comments and create a thumbnail by using some kind of graphics library. And finally, we have to put all of this on a web server that uploads this thumbnail up on YouTube and does this every 10 minutes or one minute or so. So it's, you know, it's not uh, the simplest of projects. Okay, I think I get it now. On the left side here, you have all the different data types that you can access with the YouTube API. But what we want is comment threads. Comment threads allows us to list all the comments on one video. Input the video ID, uh, this one I've inputted, and then you can execute that and you get a list of all the different comments. What we want is the profile picture of the one who made the comment. And you can actually see that here, profile image URL. The problem is that this image has way too little resolution. It won't look good on a thumbnail. We need to get this picture from somewhere else that has a higher resolution. In the comment threads, you also get the author channel ID, this thing right here. We use that in the channels data type. The channels data type allows you to get all kinds of metadata on a channel if you give it the channel ID. And what we want here is thumbnails. And you get default, medium, and high. And that's 800 by 800 pixels. And this is a quite nice resolution image. Now we have everything we need to get the profile pictures of those who have made comments on one video. And you get a high resolution image. And we can download these images and put them inside a thumbnail that we generate. While it was easy to make requests to the YouTube API via YouTube's website, it was enormously complicated to get it to work on my local machine. And that's because of authentication. But what I did was I was, I basically found this quick start file and I copy pasted everything from there. And finally, by using the quick start guide, I was able to authenticate with the API. And now I can get things uh, like views, for example here. This video by Google developers has 1.7 million views and I'm able to fetch that from the cloud, which is really amazing. Now we just have to do the hard things, getting the comments, downloading all those comments, getting the top three ones, doing another request, getting their profile picture and it's just a mess. But we will get through this. Okay, wow, um, so what we're doing here is using the YouTube API, then we call the comment threads list with snippet replies, blah, 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 you get to put in a video ID and then fetch all the authors, get a list for every author 
I have to make a call to the YouTube API to get the channel, remember, because the channel then has a more high quality resolution image. We make those three API calls and that generates three thumbnails here. And let's see if it works. Now it's calling them, it's, uh, it's even downloading them here in channel images. And this is the images, wow, that's really boring. Those images are quite boring though, but it works, which is really cool. Even though I was hoping for people with actual pictures, not just uh, letters. This program authenticates with the YouTube API. It gets the three latest comments and it gets the profile picture of the people making the comment, which is kind of incredible and downloads that picture. What I have to do now is design this thumbnail. So uh, we know what we we're gonna generate. This is the thumbnail I ended up designing. It's not the most beautiful thumbnail, but it does the job. And hopefully we will have more fun pictures than just letters here. This thumbnail was designed in Figma. So I have to create some kind of software that actually creates this image every time from the images that you download from YouTube. My plan here then is to take this picture and use that as a background, use some kind of graphics library to just composite the pictures side by side. But that's gonna be quite difficult because I've never done that before. <music> some real intricacies working with this graphics library, lots of looking at Stack Overflow. What ended up working was just copy pasting something at Stack Overflow and bam, it magically worked. That's, that's, the, that's coding life. But I'm really excited because we can now run this uh, generate thumbnail and it will take these images, channel one, channel two, channel three, and create an output where it has merged these three images and put the my beautiful thumbnail as the background. The, the final function in this whole masterpiece is the function that uploads the thumbnail to YouTube. And that was actually quite easy to make. All I had to do was just youtube.thumbnails.set, add auth and the video ID, and then it uploads it and it's done. Well, that means that we have first a function that goes to YouTube, it fetches the latest comments, it downloads their profile pictures, and it generates this new thumbnail. Finally, it uploads this thumbnail to YouTube. And to try this out, I have a video here that I wanna test with, and let's see if it works. So I'm running it, boom, it's now downloading the thumbnails, it generated the thumbnail, it's gonna upload it, and it says status 200, which means it should work. It should work. And it works, it works! That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. This, I'm the first guy in the world who has ever done that. Um, yeah, that feels pretty empowering actually. We got my function here, that's Node.js or JavaScript. And that calls the YouTube API, sets the thumbnail and so on. But we gotta put this in Google Cloud because that means we can run this from anywhere and anytime. And to do that, we're gonna use Google Cloud Functions. That is basically a web server that only has one function. To run this at a continuous interval, we're using Google Cloud Scheduler, which then calls this cloud function every 10 minutes. And unfortunately, we can only call this every 10 minutes because YouTube has a limit on how many times you can call its API. Now for the final test. It's all uploaded to Google Cloud. We have the cloud scheduler calling this function and I have this test clip where my friends here have commented. Um, let's go in to the clip, make a comment. Okay, sending that off as a comment. Now, hopefully we have the Google Cloud function being called by the cloud scheduler in the background. That's all running. This is gonna take roughly 10 minutes and then it's gonna update the thumbnail. Boom, and it got a little bit faster actually than 10 minutes. Um, and here we are, I'm on the thumbnail and it seems to be working and that's it.
thank you so much for watching please comment this video to try out this function and uh, like and subscribe to see more videos thank you